So friends, uh, this is a course on uh, risk-based engineering and uh, this is last module uh, that is uh, risk-based engineering applications. Two applications we have discussed uh, in previous lectures and uh, now this is the third um, application of risk-based engineering and uh, this is called risk-based uh, in-service inspection. In fact, risk-based uh, uh, in-service inspection is performed on routine basis in all the plants. Uh, but uh, we, uh, but then uh, using the risk-based approach, uh, there are uh, benefits uh, that have been seen because this approach is being used in uh, many nuclear power plants, uh, wherein <coughs> the inspection. Uh, reduction in inspection points uh, and then focusing on most 20% uh, 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 risk significant points. Uh, these are the bottom line. Uh, so that makes, that tightens the risk uh, uh, in service inspection procedure. At the same time, it uh, saves resources uh, such that they can be used uh, somewhere else uh, uh, in um, yeah, gainfully. So let us see the risk-based in-service inspection procedure. So we'll start with first what is uh, in-service inspection. In-service inspection is an integral part of um, periodic assessment of health of structures um, in a non-destructive. In fact, this is one of the very important technique of uh, non-destructive testing. That means uh, we uh, we uh, we put some sensor on the surface of the uh, component, we send some signal and without uh, interfering its a normal uh, uh, course of uh, uh, whether it is geometry or whether any. So um, we, 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 get, we get the sensor signals and we try to assess. Uh, it could be measuring the thickness of the uh, pipe, wall, uh, pipe wall, it could be trying to see whether any uh, uh, crack is surface crack or even in the uh, bulk uh, bulk region. If then, so these are the techniques they, they have been used to have assurance. In fact, uh, it is part of the deterministic approach uh, wherein in service inspe inspection uh, is, uh, is a sort of a assurance that gives assurance uh, for its health and for its future integrity um, so that plants can be operated. So as I mentioned, the objective is to ensure the uh, health of the uh, system and getting some sort of assessment that okay, no degradation has taken place or degradation of very low level has taken place. So that means component is available for its, its intended service. And this is especially true uh, for passive components because I in service inspection, mm, Mainly it is focusing on uh, structures, uh, pipings and passive uh, components, uh, you know, like uh, pressure vessels and uh, like that. So, uh, uh, but then how to implement it systematically? So, a, a risk uh, uh, in-service inspection program is developed uh, by the experts um, and then uh, which are the points uh, the measurement should be done, what kind of technique should be used. Uh, there are uh, various techniques uh, like uh, liquid penetration trace, visual, uh, uh, visual checks or visual inspection is one of the most prominent uh, inspection. It's, uh, and then uh, AD current testing, liquid penetration. And then so there are uh, other techniques, radiography. So the which techniques to be used so that we get meaningful signal now or there. Um, but then um, the experience of ISI uh, has been, uh, uh, one thing is there, in-service inspection is a uh, resource consuming activity. Um, uh, it requires a separate crew, it requires a setup, it requires uh, a laboratory. So, um, uh, the, there, have, uh, there have been some concern uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, among the expert 
that what is the coverage that ISI get because we don't do 100% inspection we do 25% uh, or some uh, from, from uh, of course there are uh, there are detailed debates and all that which are the component but then the ISI coverage is one of the uh, one of the point in question um, so and the second thing is periodicity what should be the periodicity uh, basically all these aspects are uh, worked out uh, by experts who have uh, experience in design operation maintenance and they decide uh, so uh, and then third is level of assurance that we have, we have at the end of it you know uh, because uh, it has been uh, uh, seen that then uh, improved insights is required from in service inspection so that means in service inspection has done uh, uh, it's, a, it's a job now what we are talking about is we want to improve its uh, efficiency because a lot of learning has taken place uh, over a period of time and why not use those data so that we focus on only very safety significant uh, so that means uh, use the resources in a more min meaningful manner <coughs> so uh, we have this risk based isi program and risk based isi program uh, again in many plants it has been uh, it has been uh, uh, demonstrated especially nuclear power plants and uh, it was seen that the inspection uh, points come down to one fourth or at least half and that is a huge saving on resources and those resources are put for those 20 percent high higher uh, higher safety significant uh, points or uh, components or location uh, so that safety is further uh, further consolidated so uh, this is the objective of risk based isi identify the risk uh, point uh, which are uh, putting uh, which are having uh, risk potential uh, do a proper job or do more you know, uh, uh, resources uh, even if some reinforcement is required or any action is required or any uh, you know so even if the, uh, there was a crack let us see the remaining life and all so th those kind of things basically to keep you in the safe zone actually um, for the plant um, and then uh, why risk based isi uh, probabilistic risk assessment basically is the model is built on each and every component of the uh, plant uh, become the basic event uh, in the especially uh, for the sake of inspection because uh, 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 the so many segments are joined and they make uh, one uh, inlet header or outlet header so uh, this uh, the uh, psa has got a, has a way to represent each component in the u uh, entry uh, fault tree and then build a system model and then finally um, finally um, uh, the pressure boundary frequency and that form the initiating event and then uh, so uh, here systematically because it is a quantified approach here we get a uh, systematic evaluation of uh, likelihood and consequences unlike the uh, the traditional approach uh, in which both likelihood and consequences they were uh, be, uh, there were they were sort of um, qualitative uh, they were qualitative and it tends to be uh, arbitrary sometime uh, because uh, it was a uh, it was based on deliberation and discussion and uh, definitely of course uh, uh, it was in the by the expert only but then uh, the I issue was that uh, how much frequency is required do we need to inspect each and every component or do we inspect only safety significant component and that is where this uh, risk based isi procedure was uh, developed and uh, what we have is uh, this procedure has become now so uh, so so much uh, you know being applied uh, world over uh, that now it has got its own standards guides and documents so that itself is a uh, uh, vindication of risk based uh, in service inspection approach and here um, here at brc we developed a model for uh, our one of our reactor and we we have uh, we developed a methodology um, and uh, and then there was a general general sense that okay uh, so this is risk based in service inspection of uh, druva at brc 
uh, it's a 100 mega for, for, normally for research reactor we don't require uh, in, in service inspection uh, but then uh, as we said the nuclear industry is always conservative and then uh, there is a uh, stipulation in uh, international atomic energy agency that uh, reactors having power more than 10 some megawatt should be uh, seen uh, uh, in the context of power reactor and all uh, now if not all the rule uh, rule uh, some rules uh, on a uh, which is called graded approach uh, based on the graded approach should be applied in a justifiable manner so that's how uh, for this reactor in service inspection program was developed so uh, as i mentioned now uh, earlier the parameters were qualitative now uh, we, we have used the quantitative uh, estimates for likelihood and consequences and um, the importance of a segment uh, comes from uh, it's a conditional core damage frequency that means we have a statement of uh, risk at the plant level also uh, so because we developed a level 1 PA plus PRA model actually it is called level 1 but level 1 plus because uh, one of the initiating event uh, if we take and uh, if we feel that this particular initiating event should be, should be analyzed as level 1, level 2, level 3 part of the PSA then it is called level 1 plus PSA. So here loss of coolant accident was analyzed and its consequences in the public domain uh, uh, were also um, uh, analyzed uh, and so that's why uh, for this re reactor for which ISI was developed it had level 1 plus PSA and uh, ISI program was initially there. So this input plus PSA input and uh, we ended up having a, uh, a program and that is risk based ISI program and the final uh, uh, because this was for, for the research reactor uh, uh, as far as uh, the my knowledge goes it was for the first time because this approach was discussed even at IAEA level and it, it was we got a sense that you know only for research reactor for Dhruva reactor it has been developed. So, um, so uh, we we have um, some observation on this uh, because uh, for power reactor this procedure is uh, uh, very much standardized. Uh, for research reactor uh, and there is another fact that most of the research reactors are very, uh, low power level uh, in the range of a couple of megawatt or even less. Uh, so for, for Dhruva a, a different template was to uh, work out uh, for this one because here we have stainless steel as the uh, uh, material uh, boundary. Um, so, uh, so then whatever consideration which have gone into this was low and high cycle fatigue consideration which was specific to uh, this reactor because corrosion was not a problem here. Corro stainless steel do not uh, uh, corrode except then few conditions that wherever when it is passing through the concrete and all. So and uh, um, this was one thing and then consideration of improvised risk matrix. Uh, it, it was a like you know uh, normally it is the uh, it is the categorization of based on the likelihood and consequences which is done for this uh, this risk matrix we had to uh, re-modify the matrix by imposing the plant specific consideration will come to that uh, uh, that thing so these are the things uh, which uh, additional work was there and uh, of course a uh, lot of r d was required uh, like uh, like even for embedded portion uh, we have to do uh, 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 get the advice of uh, material experts and then um, have some reference from our old plants uh, on the stainless steel behavior under the concrete. So uh, like for any application that we, you talk about um, only we get the procedural component from the academics. Rest at least 20 or 23 percent component they require uh, uh, R&D. So that should go uh, you know uh, that every uh, project has got a, a, a considerable R&D component and that takes a lot of time. So the point I was telling you was uh, rest of the procedure remains same but here uh, the procedure for, for risk based ISI so like first is define the problem their routine identify the system structures and component then identify the piping segment performed uh, actually 
this is the uh, this is the uh, FMIA is for the plant where don't they don't have um, a proper PSA model. But when we have a PSA model, and in uh, in PSA we got all the modes of failure, uh, failure and there its a characterization is done uh, uh, for material and all. So only uh, PSA uh, uh, result alone can work for us. Uh, and there itself we have this criticality, critical uh, correct length and all those things. So uh, for us it is the PSM uh, report that was there. This was one of the change in the standard format. And then plant specific degradation mechanisms that we have to have. And then from here uh, we will get the uh, conditional core damage frequency and plant specific factor if we get. So we have the consequences term here and we have the likelihood term here. And here we use the basic Bayesian updating. Uh, for the piping segment where the generic experience and the plant specific experience they were combined. We, you, uh, you all know what is Bayesian updating, we have discussed this earlier. Uh, it is basically using the data from two sources. Uh, one is called priori, second is called uh, um, ja, prior, uh, uh, plant specific that is evidence. So here it is evidence, it is a priori uh, and then we get the posterity over here and then here frequency uh, of failure we get. And then uh, BRC risk uh, risk based ISI program is there, and we have high category, four category of uh, uh, categorization here. But then this was a new component that you know uh, plant specific mitigation conditions. If there are some plant specific mitigation condition, they have to be imposed on. Uh, see, this condition can be negligible, low, medium, and high. So, so that means uh, indicators if they are this then very recategorization of this part point is done and finally what we get is uh, high risk medium risk low risk and negligible risk so this particular thing was required and this was uh, for 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 the for our reactor that we brought up, brought down this dimension and then we have integrated risk based isi program uh, this is the final risk matrix we have here so if uh, on the on the uh, side it is a likelihood here and the consequences are here on the uh, columns okay uh, so suppose uh, this uh, there are four category like fuzzy logic here also we uh, we categorize into uh, four uh, components uh, four segments high frequency 10 to the power uh, more than 10 to the power 4 medium low very low and then uh, we have a uh, very uh, consequences also very low or insignificant, low, medium and high. And that's how you see in red the high ranking components uh, where because here frequency was also high and consequences were also high. And medium the, over here because it was this was medium uh, that is uh, consequences and uh, frequency still remains high actually. So and this was the uh, our consequences uh, sorry frequency was in medium but consequences are high. So these three were put uh, consciously into high frequency domain. So you can say we got our 20% component of high priority components over here. Then so that means uh, high, high risk ranking 1, ranking 2 and ranking 3 are here actually. And then medium ranking. Um, consequences if they are low then it is medium because the frequency is high. Again it is medium because um, uh, consequences are also medium and frequency. So, so a mapping has to be done on both uh, likelihood and consequence level and finally this is the um, medium uh, we have got because consequences even if it happens 1 in uh, 10,000 or uh, you know 10 to the power minus 4 uh, then, then also it is very important it should not happen because consequences are very high. So one can say that importance has been given to consequences over the likelihood uh, and then it is a green zone. So th this zone that means they are, they are uh, again among the green also there are prioritization. This is number 8 uh, coming on the scale, number 9, 10, 11 and this is the lowest that comes over here. Uh, sorry, this is the lowest which comes here because here likelihood uh, is also low and consequences is also lowest. You know, So that is how this matrix and then looking at this particular uh, it's, like, it's sort of a lookup table uh, wherein we can uh, develop, we can uh, structure our in service inspection program 
So major insights for us on this uh, risk in from ISI was there is a quantitative estimates of likelihood and consequences provide effective metrics for IES. And that's how world over this procedure is being incre increasingly being adopted. The plant specific features uh, further helped in modifying the applicability of this. Okay, uh, Because if we know that one, uh, one pipe segment, if it fails, it will definitely cause uh, harm. But if you can isolate that pipe segment uh, within a very short time, the, the safety significance uh, goes down. It doesn't get eliminated, but it goes down. Okay, So these very specific features were also introduced uh, in this uh, analysis. Uh, this analysis provided insights on effective reduction in resources for ISI and uh, uh, it is in line with, this observation is in line with the international scenario. This R&D calls for a development of a rule based expert system for generation of ISI program. Um, they are, they are an expert need not, need not see, they are, want to do 10 points inspection for each point, uh, they can uh, put their queries and the computer will generate that uh, okay, inspection, the uh, type of inspection uh, to be done and what is the frequency and uh, like you know and then uh, we can develop a book also. Uh, th there is a paper on this which provides uh, complete detail um, and in life cycle reliability and safety engineering. So uh, if you are interested in getting more details, you can refer this paper. Thank you.